In previous videos, we've seen how to use higher order functions in Scheme. Now let's talk about some of the higher order functions that are built into Scheme. Specifically, we're going to talk about apply, map, and filter. So the first of these higher order functions we want to talk about is apply. The apply function combines the elements of the list using the function that's passed in. So if we have one, two, three, four, five, and we want to apply addition to that list, then apply would add one and two to get three, which it would then add to three to get six, which it would then add to four to get 10, which it would add to five to get 15, and that would be the result. So I defined a function here that I'll use, and then I've also defined some lists that I'll be using later on. So let's see how apply works. So I'll apply addition to list and to list in. And if I run that, you see that it sums those two lists together. Now I could also apply multiplication and you can see it generates those values as well. The next function we want to look at is map. Map applies a function to each element in a list. Whereas apply applied the function to every element altogether, map applies the function to each element by itself. So if I want to map, for example, square to a list, first I would square one to get one, then I would square two to get two, square three to get nine, square four to get 16, and square five to get 25, which would result in this list. So let's see some examples of map. So I can increment list and list in, and you can see here's those lists with each element incremented. Now I can also map a lambda function to square, and I'll do that to list. I could also map a function that's a little more complicated. So for example, I could say if x is greater than zero, then I'll return x. Otherwise, I'll return negative x, which if you may recognize this as the absolute value. I could also do something like map lambda x, and then here, if x is even, then I will square it, and otherwise I will divide it by two, and I'll map that to list n as well. So I'll run these, and you can see we get these values, and I actually think I should change this to odd to avoid getting all those fractions in my output. Now I could also, if I wanted, map a predicate to a list, either a built-in predicate or one that I write myself. So here, if x is greater than or equal to zero, will return true, otherwise we'll return false, and I'll map that to list, but I think all of those are positive, so let me also do it to list n. And you can see we have a bunch of trues and falses in list n. Now, you may think that's nice, but what if I want to get rid of everything that's odd or everything that's even or everything that's negative? And that brings us to our last higher order function that we're going to talk about, which is filter. So filter removes elements from a list that don't satisfy some predicate. So if I want to filter this list with the even predicate, then it looks at one. One isn't even, so it's out. Two is even, so it stays. Three is not even, it goes. Four stays because it's even. And finally, five isn't even, so it goes. So my result is going to be the list two, four. And those are the even elements from my list. So let's take a look at this in code. So we'll start off, we'll filter even from list, and we'll filter positive from list in. Then we'll filter string from bad list, filter pair from bad list, and we'll filter number from bad list. So if I run this, you can see I get the even numbers, the positive numbers, the strings, the lists, the pairs, I should say, and then finally the numbers from bad list. Now, let me change this to negative so we don't get the same result. And there we go, now it's pulling in the negatives. So here we have the two lambdas we did earlier that we tried to map to these lists. Now let's change this to a filter and you can see it filters those instead of reporting true or false. Now, what if we want to say not some predicate? Well, we could always just say lambda x, and if we want to say what's not a pair, we could say not pair x, and we can map that to bad list, and that'll return everything in bad list that's not a pair. 
Notice now we have our procedures, our string, our symbols, and so forth. Now, one of the powerful features of higher order functions is you can combine them to create very powerful statements and functions. So for example, let's suppose that I want to square every number in bad list. Well, I can map the lambda function. And if I map it to bad list, notice I get a contract violation because bad list has non-numerics in it. So I can get rid of those by filtering on number in bad list, that's going to give me just the numbers from bad list. And now you see it squares the numbers that are in that list. What if I want the sum of all of those squares? Well, I can apply addition to that result. So now I'm filtering the numbers from bad list. So now I have just the numbers that are in that list. Then I'm squaring each of those. And now I'm going to add those together. And I can put that in another function. So I'm going to define sum num square. It's going to take a list as a parameter, and it's going to apply addition to the result of mapping the square to the result of filtering the numbers from the list. So let's test this. And so when I run this, you can see that it performs that operation. So hopefully this gives you some insight into how the proper use of things like apply, map, and filter can reduce the amount of code you have to write and let you create some pretty powerful statements.